Hello everybody and welcome to part two of designing and programming custom search fields and custom form components. Now remember you guys can customize most any form element in HTML for any type of form that you're building. In this lesson we just happen to be making a custom search form field and button. Now in order to prove that our secondary images are all being preloaded before the user interacts with the elements, I've placed the finished application online so we can sense how it will act for a user that comes to your page for the first time ever. So we can sense the preloading of it. So here I am in Google Chrome and you can do this in any browser to test. You go and clear your empty your cache and clear your browsing history and all that crap. And then you go to where your application is online to test it out. Now here's mine. And if things were not preloaded correctly, when I put my mouse inside of this field and click, that field should disappear for a split second while the other one has to load into the browser and if I roll my mouse over this button right now it would disappear and glitch for a quick second before the other overstate of that button was to come into play so let's put our mouse over that button and see what happens if we get instant change that means everything is preloaded correctly okay that's great and by the way we're using CSS to preload we're not putting anything in the HTML or anything like that to mess up our semantics. Now, if we put our mouse inside of the search field, it should instantly change. That's great. Now, let's type into it. Now, if we take our mouse and we click outside of it, it shouldn't go back to the other state unless the field is empty. Now, watch if I empty this field. See, I'm clicking over here. Now, watch if I empty the field, then click over there. See, that's how you want it to react. So, if there's something in it, and you click over here you don't want it to go back to that other state but if it's empty and you click over here you do now here I am in Internet Explorer just so you guys can get a look of what it looks like there and make sure it all works correctly there too See? everything's just fine everything's preloaded I click here it goes back that's great okay now let's go into Internet Explorer to the YouTube channels and see how this thing acts let's go ahead and put a bunch of big W's in and see what happens when we get all the way to the end here this is Internet Explorer okay you see that really good you see where all those W's are now let's go to our Internet Explorer for our application and let's test it out let's put a bunch of W's in it should act the same exact way alright that looks exactly the same as YouTube's in Internet Explorer so we can close all tabs in Internet Explorer now let's check in Chrome it's gonna work the same way in fireworks and Safari and all that as it does in Chrome so let's check it out let's put in a bunch of big W's some other letters okay you see what it looks like because if they empty theirs out if you empty it out and then go back you can see it works just like ours see same thing put in a bunch of big W's blah 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 you click out here and it doesn't go back to that uh, original state unless you empty it out now that we've proven to ourselves that we do actually have an elite search field just like YouTube's is I mean it's not programmed the same exact way and maybe not designed the same exact way but it has the same exact look and functionality to it and that's what we were after now before we explain the code real well let's take a look at our website so you can see we have the index file which is a home page and then the images folder where all of those images are so as long as you understand that structure we can get into the code now and you'll understand how we're referring to those images in that image folder now since I'm gonna be explaining some code pretty in depth and if you happen to be an advanced coder that really already knows how to do all these things I don't really even understand why you subscribe to me or why you even watching the video please don't complain about the length of the time that I take to explain things thank you very much now we're starting with the bare bones of a regular HTML file you can see we have our doc type our HTML tag which opens and closes here we have a body tag opens and closes right there and the head tag opens and closes right here and inside the head tag we have our style tag that's for CSS we're gonna put our CSS here and then our script tag we're gonna put our JavaScript there so really it's just the bare bones of a web page the first thing I'm gonna do is go into the body tag and I'm just gonna give myself a little header an h2 tag that says custom form components tutorial and then under that I'm gonna open up a div I'm gonna give it an ID that's equal to my form container make sure I close off that div go down a couple of lines and put the closing tag for that div okay now inside of that div we're gonna indent a couple of spaces in that way we can make sure we see all of our elements really nice and organized and this form is gonna have an ID equal to my form 
And I'm giving all of these things an ID, that way I can communicate to them with my CSS and JavaScript. Now, the next attribute in the form tag is going to be action, and that can be set to any kind of parse file you want. I'll just put parser.php. Maybe you're sending this search query to search.php or whatever search mechanism you have set up on your site. And I'm also going to give insight into how to Ajaxify this whole thing using JavaScript towards the end of the video. Now, what we want to do is put a method of post. Just in case you want to use this in a normal, traditional type way where it posts to a file called parser.php and the whole page has to refresh and you send them to the search page type thing. So let's go down a couple lines, close off the form tag. Now within the form tag, we're going to have to float. Well, we don't have to, but this is the way I'm preferring to do it. There's a million ways to skin a cat in web development usually. And what I'm going to do is put two divs that are floating side by side. So I'm going to float them left. That way the field floats left, and then the button is going to float left right next to it horizontally on the end of it. So let's indent a couple of lines and let's put another div. And this one's going to have an ID that's equal to search field box. We can close that, go down a couple of lines and make sure we put the closing tag for that. Now let's highlight that, copy it, control C and then control V right there to paste it and then you're going to change this one to say search BTN box. So there's your div for your search button and here's a little div for your search field. We're going to float both of those left using CSS. Now all we have to do is put the input field here and then the input button right there. Okay, let's start by putting in the input field. Now this is an input type HTML element and its type attribute is set to text. That way it's a text field where people can type in one line. Then the ID on it is set to SF and that's how we'll communicate to it through JavaScript and CSS. The name attribute is query and query is going to be in the traditional form posting scenario, it's going to be the value, how you pick up the value of what the user typed in. You use the posted variable of query to find out what they typed in in your parser.php. So that's why I put that one in there. If you're going to Ajaxify the whole thing, you really don't need that one. You can use just the ID. Now we have two very important event attributes for this element, on focus and on blur. On focus is pretty self-explanatory. It's when the user goes and interacts with an element. When they put their mouse in that field to put the cursor in place and start typing, that is the on focus event when that happens. The on blur event was the event where I was taking my mouse and putting it outside of the field and interacting with something else on the page to make it where I wasn't interacting with that field anymore. That's the on blur event. So within both of those events, we fire off a JavaScript function called field swap. And I'm going to talk to you about that function in just a second when I put it in place. So field swap gets one argument sent to it. And we have to send what picture, what image that we want to swap the field background for on each occasion, on on blur and on focus both. So once I put the JavaScript in a second, you'll see that all come into play. Now the very last line in the HTML that we need is the image input type. So we're using an input type again in HTML which is your normal form type element and we're setting the type attribute for it to image this way you can use an image instead of a normal form button that looks all generic you can use any image that you like as your form processing button so that's what we're doing we're using an image type we're setting its source attribute to whatever image we want to use this is the default the SB norm the name attribute that is also put in place for your form processing needs if you happen to need to access that uh, posted variable. The ID is how we're going to communicate to it through JavaScript and CSS on the page. The alt attribute is necessary for any image type element that you're going to have on the page. So even if it's an image tag or an input with type image, you have to have an alt attribute or else you'll have validation markup errors. Then the two important event handlers for this field is on mouse over, or well, it's not a field, it's a button it's on mouse over and on mouse out of this button those are the events that I put into place because that's what I want to listen for I want to listen for when the user's mouse goes over the button and I'm listening for when the user's mouse leaves the button so when the mouse goes over the button I run a JavaScript function called button swap and then when the user's mouse goes out of the button I, I run button swap again and I just feed it the correct image that it's supposed to be swapped for now I'll put in the CSS in the JavaScript and you'll see how it all ties together like that Okay, we're going to start with the CSS and I'll explain it and then we'll move along to the JavaScript and I'll explain that too. 
Now, the CSS, the first thing that's happening is we're affecting the body tag on the page and we're making the background's body color this value and we're setting a margin on it just so my little field in this example is not all crunched up against the edge of the page. Now, these next four, one, two, three, four, five, are specific to our search field and button and all that stuff. So what we're doing here is we're targeting our form container which is the div tag right here that contains everything in the form and we're also targeting the form itself and we're placing in two images to preload as backgrounds and this is a really slick method of preloading your images without having to go down in the page and put in a div set to hidden a lot of people will put in a div set to hidden and then they'll stack a bunch of images in it that they want preloaded but that's not always the best method uh, a good way to make sure your images are preloaded without messing with your HTML or your semantics of your HTML you can just preload them through CSS is what I'm doing here so these really these two CSS rules are set in place to preload those two images the overstate of the button and the focus state of the field you can't see them because they're actually hiding behind the visible elements that the user can see so when they're needed into the place where they needed to go now this next CSS rule is set up for the SF ID so where's that that's ID of the search field that's the actual field they type into now what we're gonna do to that is make the background image equal to that SF norm by default that PNG and in JavaScript we do the little switch on it by default when the page loads you want to put that image as background into that field and you want to make sure the background set to no repeat make sure it has no border height of whatever height your field was set to in your graphics the width whatever width you want to set to make it function correctly and you'll notice that my width is not the same width as my field graphics it's a little bit shorter you can play with these numbers to see how it affects things the outline we want to make sure there's none so we don't see any outline that we normally see around fields the background color set is transparent in that because we want to be able to see through the field to the image background that we set on it right here so that's why we set the background color as transparent so we see right through the field to the imagery color is the color of the text that the person's using to type in mine is set to a light gray now the padding right and left that's pretty important because let's see if we look at this right now we'll notice that there's a little padding now if we take those padding settings away control s and run it in the browser we'll notice that it's all crunched up against the side there really tight and there's no padding on this side either and so you don't you got to make sure your padding set right so everything is cool for the user so that's why we set the padding that way so when you run it it's off of the edge a little bit and not so crunched up on the side you can also pad top and bottom to move the field cursor up and down in there now the last little bit of CSS is remember I was telling you we're floating these two divs right next to each other horizontally that's what these are doing the search field box and search field button those two divs are set to float left and you just put the width that you want to set for those to where everything looks right now we can throw in the JavaScript which is just a couple of tiny little functions just will take a couple of seconds to discuss alright I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this CSS that way it's not so dominant on the page now what I'm gonna do is put in the JavaScript and the reason why I chose to use JavaScript is because I'm gonna show you guys also a way to Ajaxify the whole thing if you don't want to use this form in the traditional form posting and parsing type mechanism you want to use Ajax I'm gonna show you some insight into doing that right after we get done explaining these two little functions now the first function is called field swap and that's the one for the search field on focus and on blur we run field swap and we want to switch out for the proper image on that event so what we do is field swap is set up to bring in one argument which is the image that it's fed down here when the function is being told to run we can pick up that image variable right there so we can use that within our function to represent that image this first line pretty much just targets that search field that way we don't have to write document dot get element by ID for every time we want to target it within our function so then we can just target the variables of SF because SF represents document dot get element by ID SF alright and we need an if condition here because if you didn't have this if condition here what would happen is if somebody typed into that field and then they on blur outside of it what's gonna happen is your original image is gonna go back into place and the text is gonna be on top of it it'll look funny so you wanna put an if condition here to say if the value of that field is equal to empty 
then and only then do you want to switch swap the field back but if it's not empty you want to leave it alone because they have text in it so you don't want to be swapping the imagery while they have any text in it if they empty it out then they on blur then this will run and it'll switch the image same thing for function button swap but there's no condition needed in there because that that's just on roll over and on roll out or on mouse over and on mouse out that's when button swap function runs same thing we're grabbing the image variable that's being sent in now it's not even really necessary because there's only two lines in here but a lot of people like to set up variables for their elements when they start talking to them to JavaScript so we take that element search button and we change its dot source to equal whatever image we're commanding it to be. So on mouse over, we're going to button swap for sb over dot bng. So what happens is we say sb dot source attribute, which is this attribute right there. You can change all of these attributes at any time you want in mid flow of your application. So that's what we're doing. We're targeting the search button. And we're changing the source attribute on it to be a different image than the one that is in by default. It's all very simple. All right, let me collapse that and get those out of the way. Now, if I wanted to Ajaxify this thing, I could just put Ajax function here. If we go to developphp.com in the video tutorial section for JavaScript, you'll see Ajax post to PHP file XML HTTP request object. That's JavaScript's way of Ajaxing. That's what Ajax is. So I'm going to grab that function right here in the example. And if you really want to understand Ajax, watch this video tutorial because I explain every little bit of this code line by line. So I'm going to go back to my page and right here where it says Ajax function here, pop, I put the Ajax function in, right? Let me just go ahead and collapse that up so you don't get confused. There's my Ajax post function. Now I'll go back to develop PHP and I'll notice I need an on click event to fire that function off. So I'll just grab that on click event for that little button down there and I'm going to put it on this button here. So now this button has an on mouse over, on mouse out and an on click event. So all you have to do is really you don't need this form tag anymore if you were going to Ajaxify everything. But you have to remember our form tag is serving as preloading for some CSS image rollovers. But I'm just saying, if you were to Ajaxify this thing in this way, on click on this button, you wouldn't need this to have a form opening and closing tag at all. You wouldn't need to parse to parser.php and refresh the whole page. You can Ajaxify the whole thing to parser.php, and the page will never refresh, and all your data from the search would come right in. Basically, if you go to YouTube right now and you look at that one, let me search here and see what happens. I think this one's Ajaxified. Let's type in flash tutorial and search. No, actually, their whole page refreshed, I believe. Yeah, it sure did. So, yeah, the whole page refreshed. So, they're not even Ajaxifying this thing yet. If they were Facebook, they would, because Facebook loves to JavaScript and Ajaxify everything. All I'm saying is, if you wanted to make it to where it doesn't refresh the page at all and it brings data straight into that little area where you want it to display for your search results, you can Ajaxify this whole thing using that function Ajax post and to really learn about how to use it correctly you can just check out this video tutorial right here okay so let me remove this Ajax post function because in my example I'm not gonna have that I was just letting you guys know in the video as an extra tip and there's my whole script I got some CSS I got some JavaScript and I got some HTML keep in mind there's a few different ways you can build an application like this that it's gonna work exactly the way you want it to work I just chose to use JavaScript that way I could you know show a few more little tricks on how to target your HTML element attributes and work with their event handling through JavaScript okay and that's everything my friends we tested in uh, Google Chrome and if it works in Google Chrome it's more than likely gonna be exactly the same in Firefox and Safari and all those other guys and we tested in Internet Explorer which is a big problem browser so we made sure it worked in that one everything preloads great it works pretty much just like the one at YouTube so we did successfully create an elite search field in HTML it works just like the ones at the big boy sites and many might not be programmed the same way and it might not even be designed the same way but we got the same app we have the same finished product no matter what road we took to get there